here. And the next talk is held by um, uh, Juan Santos and uh, uh, Arjan Naik. And it will be about the uh, API-first REST framework for Python. So welcome, uh, Juan, for uh, this talk. Hi, everyone. Today, me and my colleague, Arjun Naik, will present a uh, REST framework, uh, web framework for um, API first that we built at Zalando. So if you don't know Zalando, Zalando was founded in 2008. It, it has more than 10,000 employees, uh, more than 1,000 of which are technology alone. Uh, we are present in more than uh, 15 countries, and we have more than 18 million customers. And now, what's, what is Connexion? Connexion, uh, as the title of the talk says, is a API-first um, framework for Python. And we will see how it, what it means. So I started um, the, um, this web framework by myself in April um, 2015, uh, because I was doing a um, microservice for deployment in AWS. And according to Zalando's principles, um, uh, we, I wanted to build it API first. This means that I designed it. The API first using what was back at the time known as Swagger and is now known as Open API. And then I started looking at frameworks that would allow me to do this in Python. And I only found tools that were able to generate it the Swagger definition based on my implementation, but not way around. And why we do we do API first at Zalando? Uh, well, because we want to decouple the, the implementation from the specification, because uh, this way we can build more robust apps because uh, we don't leak our implementation details on the API. It's easier to interoperate with um, code written in another language. It's, uh, it's easier to produce a clean API and uh, easy to use, and it's uh, easier for us to achieve a, um, consistent APIs because at Zalando we use several technologies. For example, I use Python, but most of people use Java, Scala, Clojure. So whatever language you think of, we probably use it. And it's really hard to do consistent APIs if everyone is doing it after they do the implementation. And uh, what are the main features of Connexion? So API first, as I said before, is the main selling point. And we used the specification we did in Open API to do automatic routing, request and response validation, automatic serialization, and typecasting. We support OAuth out of the box, and we have access to all the Open API ecosystem. So. And what do I mean by automatic routing? So you have your specification that's in YAML file, and it will be out. Um, and uh, based on the specification, the connection will be able to connect the endpoints to your Python functions. And there are two routing strategies by default on connection. The first one is ex uh, the explicitly explicit routing uh, strategy, where you specify uh, operation ID on the YAML file, and this um, operation ID will be the module and the function that will handle your request. So in this case, if you do a GET request to, um, uh, to Hello World, it will return Hello World. And second strategy is the REST resolver which will map the endpoints automatically based on their name and the HTTP verb. So in this case, it would, um, you would set RESTI resolver. So you, set, you would say that your main model is API, and the hello world endpoint would mean api.helloworld.get. Um, you can define other uh, resolvers if you want. If you want to use another strategy, it's easy to do. It's just not included by default. OK, now we have. Uh, request and response validation integrated. Um, Open API uses JSON schema. Uh, so Connexion also uses a mo module called JSON schema that was presented, um, that was, um, that's an open source module that um, 
was presented in the morning, and it was a really nice talk. So if you did not see it, then I would I really recommend it because then you'll learn a lot about how JSON schema works. Uh, to, and having this automatic validation, it, it means that you don't have to worry about validating two requests you get. If you get an invalid request, uh, uh, um, Connexion will return a 400 error for you. And so you know that whatever you receive as input is in your function, it will just, it will be correct and uh, you will not have bad surprises for your input. The other thing we support is um, typecasting. So you can receive parameters from several forms, form data, query, body uh, parameters. And uh, because we are based on Flask, they will come as uh, strings. But because we have the specification and do we know what you are expecting, Connexion will be able to look at spec and convert it to the right type. If your endpoints returns uh, JSON, because you also define what um, your endpoints return, um, um, Connexion will also automatically serialize uh, its JSON and it supports custom encoders in the same way that Flask does. Last but not least, Connexion also supports OAuth to uh, token, bearer, bearer, token bearer authentication and authorization out of the box. On OpenAPI, you can say my application uses OAuth authentication and you need scope A, B, or C for the endpoints. And this will work completely out of the box on Connexion. Okay, then as I said, OpenAPI Open is a standard. There are tools for it and they will work regardless of what framework you use to achieve this. One of the nicer ones, and uh, this is included with Connexion, is the um, Swagger UI. So you will have a nice interface so you can deb debug your REST API. It will show you all your endpoints, it, so you, and you can, uh, and, but we'll show it later. So you'll have uh, example, we'll have, a, you'll have example applications and uh, of, uh, and uh, example calls, and you can change them and see if your application is working as expected. Uh, another cool tool is the Swagger Editor, because we are writing the Swagger specification by uh, the Open API specification by hand. This, this will show you any error of your um, specification, and it will show you how it will be parsed by an Open API compatible application. Then we have a uh, Swagger code gen that I also like to highlight. This is not, this will generate uh, client and server applications for you, including for Connexion. So it will not generate cleanest code, but if you just want to try Connexion and you have something written on open API, you can just use, it's a, it's a Java application uh, uh, um, from Swagger project, and you just provide your your server specification, you set type as uh, Python Flask, and it will generate a connection application for you, and it will just work. And you have lots more um, open source tools for Swagger in swagger.io uh, slash open source integrations. Okay, so now, if you want to get um, Connexion, you can uh, look for it on our um, GitHub page. It's github.com slash Zelenos slash Connexion. Uh, if you have any issue with Connexion, you can also, or any question, you can also ask there in, in, issue, in the issues. Or, um, me personally and my colleagues will look through it and try to answer things fast. If you want to install it, it's just pip install Connexion. Mm, nothing really surprising. And uh, we have we have documentation on read the docs. Uh, if you see anything missing, please create an issue for it because we are really trying to have some really nice documentation and some easy to use documentation. So right now I will pass the, pass the presentation to my colleague Arjun Naik that will do a small live demo uh, to show how connection works. I got this. Uh, so everyone can hear me in the back? Okay. Uh, well, the answer to this is I'm mostly stupid. <laughs> but 
uh, well, uh, writing uh, and, and, and a whole REST application with connection is quite easy. So, I mean, it's some part of it is just smartness also. <laughs> So give me a, uh, a second while I set up. Okay, so uh, this is what the Swagger editor looks like. It's in Node. So, sorry about that, but <laughs> well, it's there and it does its job quite well. So, I thought I'd write it in this. Uh, so, I'm running it in a Docker container. You can also find it at editor.swagger.io. Uh, so, we'll start off by writing the API specification. And uh, after we implement that, we can see uh, how the rest of the magic. Uh, you first start off by saying uh, Swagger 2.0, uh, which is the current specification version. Uh, then you give it a little bit of info about the API, the title, pet store API. So we'll make an API for a pet store where you add uh, a pet into the store, you remove it, you update the values, you probably can delete them as well, but let's see how many handlers we can implement in this time we have. And the version. Then produces, so what does your API uh, produce? Like uh, what kind of data? It's a JSON API. Then what are the uh, paths that we define? So this would be slash pets. Slash pets would be like a list of pets in the store. So this would be your query endpoint where you query for the types of pets. Um, then oh hang on get sorry about that so 200 means you could fetch the pets description So you already see that it's being rendered, and you uh, and you can actually uh, well you have a limitation over here because it would be a cross browser request. But if you disable uh, cross browser requests, you can test your API from uh, the editor right here. Um, let us quickly define uh, what a pet is. So definitions pet. What are its properties? So it has an ID, well, naturally, which is of type string. You don't want to modify it directly. So you say read only true. The, every pet has to have a name. And the animal type. All right. So. Uh, your uh, query pets uh, endpoint will return a list of pets. So we should uh, specify that. So we say schema type array. And what are the items in the array? We can reference the definitions by saying a ref. And pet. 
So you see that it, it returns the pets over here. OK, uh, let's also give it some parameters, because we want to, ferry, uh, we want to filter based on uh, animal type. So not here. What is the name of the parameter? The animal type. What is its type? It's a string. Where is it? In the query. Then you don't want to naturally return a list of all the pets, so we'll have a limit on that. And we'll give it a default value in case you don't want to enter it. So we have the query endpoint. Net, uh, let us define uh, over here uh, a way to add new pets. So you have pet and pet ID. You want to put it into the store. Then you have parameters. You give it a name. which is, um, it's called pet ID. The type is string. Um, it is required. And it's in the path, so you get it from here. And then you want to pass the, the pet object. So you pass the pet type. You don't specify that. Um, you can directly reference the pet that we already defined. And required is true. And what would be the responses? So. If we put a pet that already exists, uh, so we should just update its values. So 200 would be the pet was updated. If the pet ID doesn't exist, pet created. Not a valid parameter definition. Uh, Ah, yes. So it's in the body. Good catch. <laughs> um, now to fetch the details about a pet. So the pet ID is common. So maybe we can abstract that out. And from here, yeah. we just reference it. parameters of null. Oh, yes. So you reference it again. And you define its responses. That means you found the pet. OK, 
Okay, so we've defined an API. I think everyone can follow this, and it's pretty much how you define. It looks like documentation. But next comes the part that is that's interesting. So you can generate a server for this API in all these languages. Um, since we are at PyCon, let's generate a Flask, uh, a Python server. I've already prepared a virtual end. I'll just copy all the files over there. And yeah, so this is the virtual end. These are the files that were generated. You have a app. This looks quite familiar. It's uh, how uh, any Flask application would look like. You define an app. Uh, you also add the YAML file that was generated. And you define the port. Let's run it in debug mode. And the controllers con uh, contain the, uh, the handlers. Uh, as you can see, it follows Java definition, and that kind of doesn't work for us. So let's just fix that quickly. So this one's for the uh, for the get. Um, Let's define uh, pets, which is a dictionary which would hold your uh, pets. Uh, get pet. So if pet uh, ID in pets, then return pets pet ID. If it's not, So no content is if you don't want to return, if you, are, if you want your body to be empty. We say for not for. Live coding never is. Yeah. So put a new pet. If the pet exists, if pet ID in pets, then update the pet. So And say 200, which means updated. Else, do not one created. And finally, the the query endpoint. P for P in pets dot values. If so, we may or so the animal type might be specified or not. So it might be present in the query or not. It's not a required parameter. So if it is present, I'll have to fix this quickly. If not animal type or animal type equal to and we limit of course this is a very simplistic example. Let's run the server. Oh address already in use. Better? Can everyone see it now? OK. Uh, I'll use HTTP pi. 
which is an awesome c uh, command line um, utility written in Python for S S to interact with JSON APIs. So it says HTTP get the pets uh, empty because we have not added any pets. Let's add some pets. So let's add an animal type of dog whose name is Spot. Two not one created. Let's update it. Let's call the dog Felis. Two hundred, which means it got updated. Uh, let's add another pet. This time we'll add a cat. And call it Leo. Two not one created. Now let's look at the pets again. So we have the dog and the cat. Now let's have filter it. And dog. And cat. So that's my demo. Thank you very much. Uh, back to my partner. So any questions? Hi. Uh, well, I'm not really into Schwager, but how do you handle versioning of the API exactly? Well, there are several theories about that. So in the end, is in the end is up to you. Uh, you should. You should think your, um, in my opinion at least, you should uh, try to get um, to make your uh, your first version of the API port compatible. So you just change the version and um, try uh, and you try to deal in future versions with uh, with requests. But then you you really need to look case by case and see what makes sense for your code. Any questions? No? Okay. Oh. Can you handle complex types? Uh, in, what in validation, in validation, serialization, and everything? But if you find something that's not supported, then it's a bug, please raise an issue and we will try to figure out how to make it work. So when I created the uh, the pet, uh, although it looks like it's a parameter, a get parameter, the name and the animal type are actually JSON uh, fields. Okay, uh, yeah, that's why HTTP pi is awesome. Uh, and uh, if uh, they ha specify a ta uh, type in the uh, in the Swagger schema, uh, they will be validated for that type. So you can use things like regular expressions. Uh, nested objects and it will validate all of that so basically any kind of scenario i i think it will it will hand, handle okay about validation i would really recommend um talking morning from um about sun schema when it's online because it, it really goes into detail how it works and what it can do any other questions Okay, so thank you again.